All right, welcome back to the Advanced Inorganic Chemistry series. This will be the last lecture, and I would like to use this opportunity to talk about boranes and their structure. We're going to use something called the Sticks Rules to predict the structure of certain borane clusters. What makes these compounds interesting are their three center two electron bonds. We know the most the simplest borane compound is BH3. It will dimerize, and the way it obtains its octet here is by making a three center two electron bond. So it is actually this sigma bond that will donate two electrons into an empty p orbital. And so we, we call this a three center two electron bond. And then of course it has terminal bonds and whatnot. But what happens is these borane compounds, they, they decompose and then rearrange and they make clusters. And so the second simplest cluster is B3H9. And so what happens is they can make three different types of clusters, either completely closed, closo, or slightly open nido nido like as in nest and then aragno as in spider completely open and and so what happens is we have a network of boron boron bonds right so so it can it can obtain its octet by making boron boron bonds or uh, those bridging hydrogens or terminal hydrogens but it can also form a uh, three center two electron boron 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 bonds so it can it can make these clusters and so the fewer hydrogens you have the more closed your system so if you put your borane cluster B3H9 into the system where you uh, indicate that every boron has at least one terminal bond okay so this is where that BH and then three comes one so if we have a total of nine hydrogens three of them are attached to each boron so we have that and then we have additional hydrogens in this case we have six and it turns out so we either have two four or six additional hydrogens and so the general structures we get are the closo nido and aragno the completely closed right the fewer hydrogen you have the more boron boron bonds and the more connections you have to make to form spherical or closed structures i'll show you some pictures pictures in a minute and so we could actually then play around with the possibilities. We can, uh, so we can have boron-boron bonds. We can have boron-boron uh, <clears throat> boron bonds, which are three center, two electron bonds. We can have additional hydrogen, terminal hydrogens, and we can have uh, uh, bridging hydrogens. So if you were to predict the structure, you could do this. You would simply say, okay, so those three boron uh, atoms are going to have a terminal hydrogen. I'm going to spread them out. So I have additional six hydrogen. And so the goal here is for me to arrange the six hydrogens by giving every boron an octet. So and, and symmetry is also something that's going to be a driving force. Let's just put it that way. So the more symmetrical you draw this, it, it, of course, it gets more complicated to draw this on a two-dimensional surface at some point when we get to five, six, or, or nine borons, so I'll keep it pretty simple. But so I'm just going to take three of these hydrogens here and make them bridging. And so I, I draw these loops, but you need to understand that this loop here, and you, you, can, you can do a dashed line if, if you want, but if it's not a straight line, it's not a terminal bond. If you're drawing it and connecting and putting the hydrogen up top, I understand that you are drawing a hydrogen bond uh, or a bridge, which is again, it's that two electron uh, a bridge. So that, that already helps. We have three more hydrogens left, right? So boron here ha each has three, six electrons. And so we have three left. What do you know? We put a terminal hydrogen on each of these and we have a satisfied structure. So when you're done, you will have used all of the hydrogens and every boron center will have four lines or eight electrons. So that's the goal here. Let's take a look at some examples. This is a table of the different structures of the possible boranes for five, six, and seven. It's just a snip. I have the complete table up where you can Google it. So this is Q equal to two, Q equal to four, 
and Q equal to 6. So we have Nido, sorry, Nido is in the middle, Closo, Nido, and Arachno. You can kind of see how for Q6 it starts to open up. You know, it doesn't, if you have imagination, it looks like a spider. And, uh, uh, and so you can, you can uh, determine or write the formula of any of these, like if you wanted the, uh, the Closo uh, B6, we know we have B, H, 6, and then we have an additional two hydrogens, so this would be B, 6, H, 8, so, uh, right? And so if we were to, to do this, we have Q, we also have 6, so we have B, H, 6, and then an additional six hydrogens, so this would be B, 6, H, 12, right? So that would be the formula for the B, 6, boron containing arachno structure, right? So, okay, so let's take a look at uh, just a few of them. So this is a closo structure. You can, you can really see how, uh, yeah, it's completely closed. Uh, also note, this has a negative two charge. So the formula of this, so for closo, we have six here, right? So we would have B, six, H, eight. But this is B six H H six. So what happens is you can take one of these boron centers, and so if I draw the boron center uh, like this, I'm going to put a single electron here. I mean, this is connected to the network boron boron bonds, uh, and then you have. I'm going to draw lobes. You have two hydrogens, right? And so these hydrogens, so here we, we're looking at, at six electrons. So in the network or the skeleton structure, this can be a terminal or it can be a, a bridging hydrogen. But the point is that these lobes here, those two electrons are important for the cluster or the skeleton, whatever you want to call it. And if you replace one of these hydrogens, just take an H plus off, you are not removing the two electrons, the two electrons can stay put in your network. And so if you replace a boron, a BH2 unit with a BH minus unit, they are called to be isolobal. Okay. And so we're going to come back to that after I, I go through the sticks rules. But for now, we're just going to look at examples of structures. And so uh, really important here is what I forgot, the negative two charge, right? If we're going to replace two hydrogens and leave the skeleton electrons intact, we have to also add or leave the electron behind. And so here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, hydrogens, but the two hydrogens that were removed once again have left their skeleton electrons behind. Okay, so let's take a look at a NIDO structure. You can see how that opens now. So this is B, uh, B five H. So that's five plus four. That would be H nine. That's the B five H nine. I think that's actually one of the examples we're going to be drawing later on using those infamous stick rules. And this is completely open here. We have a B4, and so that means we have 10 hydrogens, right? Four for the terminals, and then you can count that up, but I'm just going by the rules where we take the, uh, we have Q and then, uh, sorry, that's P. P are the number of BH units, and then Q is the number of additional hydrogens. So that's what I'm going for, and I'm, just counting to four here, and then adding the six extra hydrogens. Okay, so before we do the, well, here are the sticks rules, but just in summary, what we have are, we have S, T, Y, and X possibilities. So S are bridging hydrogens, and y, uh, X are the additional terminal hydrogens. So this does not include P, right? So if we have, BH3 and then H2, Q is equal to 2. So S and X, for example, have to add up to Q. Okay? So for the NIDO structure. 
keep that in mind. So those three are not included in the sticks rules. And then we draw the triple bridging bond. I would draw it like this because if you draw, it should really look like this, right? Like a, like a T, triple bond. But if you draw it like this, uh, you may think this is a boron boron bond. Ah, I'll, I'll be able to distinguish boron boron bonds from triple bonds. So, but you can draw them like this. That's perfectly fine with me. And then we can have sigma bonds. We have two electron, two center boron boron bonds as well. So we need to be able to distinguish between these two. And so there's T and Y. So we have S, T, Y, and X. So if we were, for example, uh, we'll use that simple, simple structure that we came up with um, B3H6. I guess I did mess up this, this is, but it doesn't matter. So this is just a NIDO structure. And the example I used was the, was the arachno structure. But you'll have to construct a sticks table, and then we're going to use the information to, to draw different kinds of structures. So first thing you do, if I give you something like B3H9, the first thing you want to do is you want to put it in this form. You want to determine P and Q, and then tell me, OK, this is going to be arachno and then you construct a stick table. And so we use these rules here. The first rule says Q, which are the, uh, which are the hydrogens, the additional hydrogens. So that's in this case six, all right? Six halves would be, would be three. And then S are the bridging hydrogens. So what that essentially says is that at least half of the additional hydrogens have to be bridging. So you can start that by with three, because it has to be at least three, it can't be two, so it's not gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. That makes our table shorter to begin with. So three, four, five, six. And then the other obvious rule is this one here, because we have six electrons to deal with, and then S and X have to add up to that number. So this has to be three, two, one, and zero. So that's half the table with just logic. Obviously, I'm not going to make you memorize this. You have, you're taking these things online. So, so you have the rules, which makes things easier. So what do we do with T and Y? So T is calculated by taking P, the number of borons, minus the number of bridging hydrogens. So if P is equal to three, then we just do three minus three, which is zero, and then three minus four, which is actually minus one. And at this point, we're, we're done. However, I do want you to complete the table even with negative numbers, because we can't have negative uh, triple bridges, right? But just to finish the table, we'll put that in. But that obviously means that the only possibility is going to be this one here. And then finally, you need to determine the number of boron boron bonds. And that we do by S, the bridging hydrogens minus Q half, which Q half in this case is three. So here we do a three minus three, which is zero, and then four minus three, which is one, two, and then three. So that is the table. This is just uh, the summary. And so this is what I want you to, to do. I want you to produce this indicate what Q and S is, and then you start drawing a structure. Then you go, okay, so three, zero, zero, three, and, uh, and, and so we already drew that up on the board. It's going to just be uh, you drawing it like this. So those are my terminal, this is my, my core, and then I have to have three bridging, so I just spread them out in this case and three terminal, one, two, three, which we did on our own without uh, without using the sticks rules. But when things get a little bit more complicated, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's do this one. Here you go, homework, right? You can practice all of those and chances are one of those is going to be on the exam. I'm gonna do one more right here, B5H9. So let's do that and then move on. No, I'm gonna do B4H10, okay. All right, doesn't matter. Uh, B4, so B5, H, H9 might be on the exam. I don't know, maybe maybe I have the two confused. I'm not sure. Feel free to send me your, your drafts and your drawings, and I'm happy to reply and, and uh, give you thumbs up or make corrections, okay? 
So first thing we do is we say B H four. So P is equal to four. It's always going to be equal to the number of boron centers, which leaves us an additional six hydrogens. So we kind of have a similar table. We have uh, at least for S and X, right? So if, if half of those have to be bridging, we get three, four, five, and six. And then again, three, two, one, and zero. That needs to add up to the total number of hydrogens, which is either six, four, or two. So this is uh, pretty limited. Uh, so now next we're going to do T, the triple bridges, which is uh, so, so P in this case is 4, so we're going to do 4 minus 3, which is 1, 4 minus 4, which is 0. So now we're going to have probably two possibilities that we need to draw, and then this is going to be minus 1 and minus 2. So this just goes up by 1 because P, obviously S goes up, so at uh, some point we turn negative. And then finally we do the boron-boron bonds, Q half is is 3. So we're going to have 3 minus 3, which is 0, 1, 2, and 1. So this is the table. And now we have to draw two different possibilities. And I, it's not going to be pretty when I do it, but I am going to try to draw this. So we're going to draw 3, 1, 0, 3. So 3, 1, 0, 3. So we have four centers. So I'm going to put boron, 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 and I'm going to draw the terminal. So I have, I have, uh, but I have six more hydrogens to worry about. So I have one triple bridge, and, and you just got to play around with it and then and send me the prettiest one. So I promise you right now, I'm, I'm not, it's not going to be pretty for what I'm doing, or maybe with four centers, I can probably do it. So I'm going to draw my triple bridge in first, because this is S, T, Y, and X. So we have one triple bridge. So you want to consider that when you spread out that you've just put electrons onto, onto your, uh, under these borons, and then I have uh, three hydrogen bridges. So I'm going to go one, two and three i'm just guessing at this point right so and then i need to put three more in and so now i count to four right so this boron here is is ready this boron here needs a hydrogen this boron here needs a hydrogen and this boron here needs a hydrogen so let's make sure one two three four sometimes i put five bonds right so you want to be careful this looks pretty good. Let me go back and check what the other one was. Four, zero, one, two. Okay, so we now have four, zero, one, two. So let's give that one a shot, right? So again, we have four boron centers, each with a terminal bond. This time we have a boron boron bond. Uh, and you can start with that boron boron bond. You can draw it anywhere you want. But I'm going to start with my bridging hydrogens because it's going to make a nice little symmetrical cluster. So I've just done those. One, two, three, and four. You can draw your boron boron bond anywhere you want. You can do it diagonally or across. It doesn't matter. Again, we have like this two-dimensional surface, so this isn't really going to do a great job representing that. But uh, so now we clearly can see that we need two more hydrogens, one on this one and one right here. And now every boron center has two electrons. Okay, so here's the answer for that. Oh, here's another one. Okay, so but I'm not gonna work it. You work it, okay? Let me go back real quick and point out to you that you have tons of possibilities to practice this. All right, one last thing left. And that is the isolobal analogy. Mentioned it once already when we looked at the uh, anionically charged center. So what we're doing is we're calling structurally BH2 and BH9 units are isolobal. 
and so of course boron has three valence electrons so we're talking about uh, so each of these here has to have the same number of electrons so it fits into the cluster so there are actually compounds called carboranes and uh, uh, so e uh, some of the borons are replaced with CH units okay so but each of these CH units is going to have to also occupy the same region so it has it has these five electrons here right in this case so it's that it's that hydrogen that that makes it neutral uh, because you know carbon doesn't have five electrons so anyway uh, so let's let's take a look at that so this is just uh, it can get more more complicated right it's not just about boron but it can just be sections of a uh, organometallic compound here right so uh, like a, a carbonyl cluster that has two lobes here so you can you can actually put this into your skeleton network and and make these metalloboranes and they're very interesting and uh, I almost ended up doing research for a guy who does these metalloboranes and and uh, but I went with silicon for some reason uh, the silly silicon just had to I messed up there but anyway uh, <clears throat> so what does that mean for you it means that you need to be able to look at a structure and tell me is it arachno nido or closo so you have to understand that in order to go back to the uh, original arrangement all you have to do is take the charges away and add a hydrogen in so this is analogous to B6 H8 so we know that Q is equal to 2 and this is going to be closo so that's pretty clear right and I mean I'm not gonna give you the picture of it but I'm gonna give you the formula and then you t need to tell me it's isolable with C6 H8 and so that would be Q equal to 2 and closo and, and so you can do this one step at a time, right? So, so uh, actually we don't have negative charges here, so we can just take the, the carbons here. Remember that a B H2 unit is isolable with a C H unit. So if you go backwards now, if we replay, we need to, uh, if we take these two carbons out, we also have to take out two hydrogens, right? So this turns into, uh, sorry, we have to add a couple of hydrogens back in. So that turns into B6 and then H8. So what you're essentially doing is you're taking an ECH unit out and you're replacing it with a BH2 unit. So the shortcut that I took was I took the two carbons out, added two borons but also added two hydrogens and that's how I got back to that and that's still closo so you can kind of you can kind of see how this occupies uh, the same area here in this in this cluster so we can uh, we can do this here this is a more complicated cluster but you do the exact same thing here so this would be isolable with so we go from we take the two carbons out so we go to B12, and then we add two hydrogens. So it looks very close though to me, so that's probably what it is. And then we go to H14, so Q is going to be equal to 2, which is going to be close though, okay? So you should be able to do that. You can practice that. This is the last thing I'm going to be doing. Uh, here are just a couple more examples of, of clusters. You, you should, uh, we can do this one as well, right? So, so now I would suggest you do this step by step because we also have a negative charge. So what I would do is I would simply go to B9, keep the carbon, and then just add a hydrogen for each charge you have. So that's going to go to 13. And then in the next step, then I would do and replace. So B nine sorry we're gonna have to add two borons and then we go to h uh, 15 so now we have q equal to four and this is going to be a nido structure uh, forget this one but here are some that you can do now i haven't done the nitrogen yet but you have the isolobal charge 
chart. So so go for it. Now I'm thinking this is about it. Oh yeah, and I'm not gonna do catalysis. This is the end. Thank you very much.